I'm Lieutenant Amna Baki with Seattle Fire Department. Today we're going to give you a fire engine tour on Fire Engine 39. We'll start with where I sit. As Lieutenant on the fire engine, this is my seat. I sit up here and I have a computer. It's called the MDT, the Mobile Data Terminal. And this helps me to see what type of call we're responding on, what the information is, and what the address is so that my driver knows where we're going. We have headsets up here and we have a microphone on them that we talk into when we're dispatched to a call. Moving on, we have the two people in the back. They're called the tailboarders. They sit back here. And you can see there's a lot of equipment back here. There's the air pack with their breathing equipment, they have their face piece, some even have their jackets and other items that they may need throughout the day. So they, when we get a fire or medical emergency, the tailboarders jump in back and they put on their gear and then we put on our headsets and listen to the dispatchers to see what type of emergency we're going on and what equipment we'll need. You can see that a fire engine has a lot of fire hose. That's because when fire engines go to fires, our job is to put water on the fire and help to put out the fire and help residents get out of the house safely so that everybody's okay and protect as much property as we can. When the firefighters go to an emergency, they put their bunker gear on and they put their backpack and they put their face piece and helmet and gloves and then they'll climb out of their door and they'll grab the right hose that they need for the fire to lay it to the building. And at that point, the fire engine driver sends water in the hose and it sends it directly to the nozzle and they spray water on the fire. These on the side of the engine are called ports and these are ways that water can go into fire hose if the fire hose is connected. As we go to this compartment and open it up, we have all of our EMS supplies. So EMS stands for Emergency Medical Services and this is what we use to help people who are sick or injured. So we have everything from a kit that has oxygen, so it helps people who need help breathing if they have a really bad cough or asthma or are very sick. And we have what's called our yellow jump kits. And these have things like Band-Aids. They have a blood pressure cuff you may have seen at your doctor's office. They have medicine if someone has allergies and even things like scissors and little lights so that we can look into people's eyes. Moving on, we have a compartment up here. This contains a couple of tools we may need if we go to a car accident. This is called the manual spreader. So when we take out this tool, it's pretty heavy and we can actually use it if we need to cut through a car or open up a car door that may be stuck because someone got into an accident. And back here, this is actually my compartment. So I have my bunker pants and boots. I have my helmet. I have my backpack and some tools that I may use on a fire. This is called the New York hook. So this is a great tool because it can be used to reach up high if I need to reach a ceiling and I can poke a hole in it and pull it down if I need to peek behind the ceiling to see if there's fire hidden behind. And I can also use it for other things um, such as balance and even as a pry bar. This is the back of the fire engine where we have the rest of the hose. So we have large diameter hose called LDH. We have our hose lines that the firefighters put on their shoulders. And we even have some medium sized hose that we may use if we need to go a further distance because the fire is down a long driveway or up a bunch of stairs. And then these are called pump cans. This is what we use if we have a small fire. And you can see if I spray it out this way that there's water inside of them. They're kind of fun if you just want to use it to cool off on a hot summer day, but we don't do that very often. If you come around to this side, we have a compartment similar to what you saw on my side, only this is the driver's compartment. So our driver, uh, he or she will have their gear back here. We also have safety cones that you may see sometimes when you're on the freeway or diving down the road. And these help to let cars know that we're working 
on an emergency scene and slow down and be safe because we might be working and need people to watch out. We have some caution tape and we have some other supplies. Um, these are called the irons and they're used to force a door. If a door is stuck shut, maybe someone locked it or their house is on fire, we can use these tools to pry the door open. Up here we have a chainsaw, which some of you may have seen. We use this if we need to cut through wood or other materials to get access or go through a roof or find some hidden fire in a wall. We have these bags here that carry lots of smaller tools and equipment. If we go into an apartment building and we have to hook up different sizes of hose or access different areas of a building. And this compartment is called the driver's compartment. So in this compartment, we have all different sizes of what are called couplings. And couplings are parts of hose that can be paired with each other to connect different sizes and different lengths of hose. So you can see, for example, that if I take two couplings, they actually screw together and join as one. These are made out of a material called pyrolite. But in the olden days, they were made out of brass, which looks like a little bit like this, but it's more yellow. And so sometimes we call them brass. We have more hose on this side and more ports, just like you saw on the other side. The same door is on the other side. And then the last part of the fire engine is the driver's door. So this is where the driver sits up and they drive the fire engine. They have a steering wheel, they have uh, some foot pedals that control the different sirens. So if you ever hear the loud siren as a fire engine is driving by, that's how they're doing it with their feet. They can push it to make it uh, honk and they can push it to make it do a regular siren. And then some levers that control the fire pump. Fire engines have 500 gallons of water on them, which is a lot more than five or six baths full of water. So when firefighters get to the fire, even though they're gonna hook up to a fire hydrant to supply water from the fire hydrant through hose to the engine, they also have their big tank full of bathtubs of water that they can spray on the fire. So when the fire engine driver gets there, he or she will activate the pump and that'll send water into the hose and help the firefighters put out the fire. I hope you enjoyed this tour on Fire Station 39 and I hope that you're enjoying Seattle Fire Day.